Hello, everybody, and welcome to Zenotic Consulting's Beginner Series. Um, in this video, we're going to be diving into Sales IQ, specifically to the answer bot inside of Sales IQ. Um, of course, my name is Tyler Colt with Zenata Consulting. And before we do get started, I just want to say if, uh, if anyone does find this video useful, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and like the video. Um, that really does help us out a lot and make sure that you'll see our future videos as we continue to post them. Um, so in this video in particular, we're going to be diving into the answer bot inside of Sales IQ. Um, it's important to note that there are two different bots inside of Sales IQ. There's a Zobot and there's an answer bot, and they're used for two very different things. So with a Zobot, you'll be building out a kind of specific if-then sequence that a chatbot would um, prompt a user to engage with, ideally with the goal of getting them to connect to a particular department and maybe talk to sales or maybe you're using it for customer service and you wanna figure out a couple key identifiers about a customer service request. Um, so for use cases like that, you might wanna use a Zobot. What an answer bot is and what we will be diving into today is actually a new feature here that's based on um, natural language processing. And so what the answer bot will do is basically, you know, analyze the incoming chat and try to match that chat to a set of help articles or frequently asked questions that we've loaded into Sales IQ. Um, so it takes a little bit less coding. Actually, I should say it takes a lot less coding. It's something that you kind of just turn on. Um, and as long as you have a robust bank of articles and frequently asked questions, it'll kind of do the rest for you. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into kind of the initial setup of the Zoho bot and what we're gonna need to do first. Alrighty, and so to actually get started here, um, we'll open up this settings panel and we'll jump into the answer bot section. Now, I already have one of these created in this demo account, but it's basically just created at the, the baseline and kind of default settings. If you don't have one created yet, it'll just have a little option here to create the bot. Um, once you go ahead and create it, there's kind of four different sections that we'll want to walk through. There's the profile of the bot, the resource selection options the response configuration and the behavior configuration. And we're gonna break each of those down as we go here. Um, the bot profile is kind of the simplest info. So of course you could upload a particular image if you wanted to change the logo. You could give it a name here. So maybe I wanna call this helper bot and that's gonna update what would actually appear for the customer. And then we can change this description. I'm just gonna show up underneath the name here in the chat widget. We can choose what hours this bot should be working. Um, in this case, because it is a answer bot that doesn't really need any human intervention, it might not hurt to have it on 24 seven. And then the last element of the profile is if you did have multiple different departments set up, you could choose which department you want the bot to be associated with. Kind of moving to the next sets here, we do have to then choose our resource selection options. So the answer bot can pull from two different types of information. You can have it pull from a FAQ or frequently asked question, and you can have it pull from an article. And those two different types of content are actually going to apply a little bit differently. So as we're looking at those now, what I'll do is I'll jump over to the um, resource library where we actually can add these in, and we'll kind of take a look at what they look like and how they're different. So from this bot page here, I can go ahead and exit out. It's going to save all of the progress and edits that we made so far. I'm actually going to leave settings for just a moment. And we're going to come over here to the left-hand tab and open up resources. And so here we'll see that we have two different resources, an FAQ or an article. I'll do the FAQs first. So an FAQ is kind of a really point and shoot thing that you might want to uh, add that you might expect a customer is gonna ask you. Now, what we'll notice about an FAQ is that we can add multiple different questions that get the same response. So you might have something like how to reset my password. I might also wanna add something just like reset my password and password reset. 
Now, of course, you can go on and on and on with this list and kind of say what should be the default question here. In this case, I'll keep it as the most full question. And then we'll give the actual response. So maybe we we'll wanna do something like on the sign in page, there is a link to reset my password. This will email you a secure link to make this change. And so now that we've set up the response here that we'd wanna give, if we see any of these questions come through, we'll go ahead and associate this with the department, and then we can save and publish this FAQ. Okay, and so now that we've got this frequently asked question set up here with a couple different options in terms of these questions, uh, if we jump back over to our answer bot here under settings and answer bot, we can open this up and do a little bit of testing. So if I were to type something like reset my password, and this is kind of what the, the customer experience would be like over here on the right, it will go ahead and just give me the actual text from the FAQ directly inside of the bot. Now, you might think that, you know, we only added those three specific questions. So what would happen if someone were to do something like reset account password instead of my password? where keeping in mind, we didn't have this phrase specifically associated to this um, frequently asked question. But because of the natural language processing that the bot is doing, it kind of identifies that reset account password is very similar to reset my password. Now you will find, and you know, we'll have to try a couple of these to find one that doesn't work, but sometimes if the phrasing is a little bit different or if the sentence structure is a little bit different, it might not work. So if we're to do like password to my account needs a reset. So now we've kind of hit the outside limit here of things that it can't quite line up to those questions. So if you are using the frequently asked questions, you wanna go kind of overkill with how many different question variants you have associated to that frequently asked question to try to make sure that you're covering as many of your bases as humanly possible. And so now that we've set up the first of our frequently asked questions, um, maybe we wanna go over and take a look at articles and how those work a little bit differently. So again, kind of jumping out of the bot here and going back over to our resources, we'll go into the articles section this time. And the articles are more like a traditional knowledge base. So if you're using Zoho Desk, that'll be a pretty familiar functionality. Um, so let's say maybe we wanna have an article for accessing my billing information. Now, what we'll notice with the article is that it gives you more of like a text editor view within the article creation. So if you wanted to do things that were multimedia, you know, maybe you wanted to include an image, a table, an embed of a video, right, where you're walking through some more specific information, you can absolutely do that through this article interface. So a general rule of thumb is that really quick things that don't really require a breakdown, you might want to drop in as a frequently asked question. But for things that are a little bit longer and take more um, nuance to give them a good answer, you might want to build that out as an article so that you can include more information. So for now, I'll just go ahead and fill in some quick little information about finding billing information, and then we'll jump right back into the walkthrough. Okay, so now we've dropped in just a quick little uh, article here for the customer to use. We'll go ahead and publish this. Again, we're going to publish it out to our department that we're using for the answer bot. Just takes a moment here to publish. <clears throat> okay, now that that's done, we can jump over back to settings, back to our answer bot, and then take a look at how this works a little bit differently when we have an article. So here, maybe if I were to type something like billing information, it's gonna scrape our articles, looking at the title as well as the content of the articles and it'll give them links over to those articles that best fit the question or statement that the customer provided. This link, of course, will open up under um, into kind of a pop-up on the page where they can see any of the relevant information that we've logged into that article. 
And so kind of as you go through these, the main thing that you want to be thinking about is just how many of the common questions that you get can you build into either a frequently asked question or an article. If you're not sure, like if you're thinking, should this be a question, should this, or should this be an FAQ, or should it be an article, I would advise going with articles. Um, the reason being is that over time, you're probably going to find a lot of value in doing multimedia responses. Like even for something simple, like a password reset, which we did as an FAQ here, you might want to include a video or, you know, a GIF or image to help them just know exactly where to click and exactly how to do those specific steps. Um, as we go through here, um, now we've kind of covered our frequently asked questions and articles, and we can now jump into our response configuration. So the response configuration is just covering a lot of the different text that the bot will use as it's answering questions. So once it finds a particular answer, whether that would be, um, you know, whether it's a knowledge base uh, article or a frequently asked question, you can tell it, you know, what you should say at the beginning of that. We can determine what these different follow-up actions should be. So our connect to operator, leave us a message, any of those can be set up here under the response configuration. Um, for some people, when they're using an answer bot, they say, you know what, the purpose of this thing is not to route to support. So maybe we want to just turn that off. That's no problem at all. We can just go ahead and disable that section, or maybe we want to disable any of these follow up actions. And now, if we were to do something like our test, it's just going to give them that article and not give them the option to connect to an operator. Um, the one thing I'll kind of highlight about that is that if you don't plan on having users actually sitting inside of Sales IQ to field those questions, you'll want to turn those things off. Um, now, in this case, I turned all of them off. Maybe we just want to do some of them. So we could say, you know, don't allow them to connect, but allow them to leave a message. Um, you know, that's kind of a common one. So you can see those types of messages that they might leave at the end. Uh, kind of going down the page, you know, we can change what our response should be when they end the chat. Um, we can also start to make changes to what things should look like if they, um, if we're not able to find any specific types of articles. Um, so for example, maybe I were to type something like, you know, email campaigning. And so in this case, we don't have any articles related to this really in any way. So it's given us this, sorry, I can't find any resource to your search. Um, this related resource suggestion is where you're looking at things that aren't a great match, where maybe words don't specifically match, but that you want to include them. That can be a good place to start as you're building out your knowledge base. And maybe you don't have every single base covered, so you want to try to send someone something useful, even if it might not be a perfect fit. Um, down here at the bottom, of course, we can change additional follow-up actions that should be taken and the language around those. If you do have the forward to operator enabled, um, you can go ahead and say what those messages should look like if somebody's busy or if we're not able to connect with them at that time. Um, really, a lot of these here, are, as you kind of walk through them, are pretty self-explanatory. They're not too bad to kind of get through. They kind of just break them into the same settings based on if we found an answer if we didn't find an answer or if there was some type of error or fallback, meaning like a connection was not able to be made to an operator. The last little setting here is just about how the bot should behave on the website. So we can say, should the bot proactively engage with someone? So should it pop up and say, hey, have any questions? Or should it just be waiting there for the user to click on it first? Um, we can also change what the greeting message should be. So maybe we want to clean this up a little bit. So I can change that initial language. And now we've changed our helper bot's first message. You can determine if you want to do a delay on responses. Uh, that would be if you wanted to kind of give it a simulated human feel. Oftentimes, immediate is best, though. In that case, if you're not sure, just leave it as immediate. Um, you can also say if someone were to kind of abandon the chat, right? do we want to give them a prompt that says, hey, are you still here, or should I close this out? Um, you can do the same thing here for automatically closing out the conversation if they haven't said anything in five minutes. So we'll just consider that done and close it. And then lastly here, it gives us that last option of if we would ever want to give the bot the ability to hand off to an operator.
And so with that, we've kind of covered the core elements here of our answer bot. So really just to summarize of everything you'll need to do to get it set up is first, you'll need to go through the box profile and give it a name, a description and working hours. Then we'll need to build out the set of resources that the bot is going to pull from, whether those are frequently asked questions used for kind of simpler um, questions and answers, or if they're going to be articles, which are kind of a multimedia response to a particular question that comes in. Next, you'll need to go through your response configuration and what and kind of determine what you want the bot to do when an answer is found, not found, or when there is an issue. And lastly, we'll need to set up some specific behavior configurations about should the bot be proactive, should it allow a transfer to a user, and what should our response intervals and inactivity periods look like. Now, the last little thing that we'll want to cover quickly at the end here for building out the bot is some of the settings around small talk, business terms, and unanswered questions. So inside of um, Sales IQ, they've actually given a couple specific packages around making small talk. So if a user was to say something like, hi, good morning, good afternoon, the bot can actually respond with some pre-decided terms. Um, you can do these for kind of a variety of things. If someone says, thank you, you can have the bot say, you're welcome. These are just kind of little things that are, you know, really just kind of fun to set up uh, as you're building a bot and it can make it feel a little bit more personal so that people don't feel that they're just going through an automated system. Um, you can also set up specific business terms if you want to train the bot. So for example, I might want to say for our billing guide, I might want to say that if someone has a question about a transaction, um, maybe a similar term would be like invoice or bill or payments, right? And all of these words, when the bot is looking at incoming chats, should be treated as synonyms for a transaction. This is a really powerful tool because you're only going to be able to cover so many different words in an article that might be relevant. So by building out a robust set of business terms, you're able to control for you know, the natural variability and how people are gonna ask questions. Now, the last little section here, um, because we don't have this bot live, we don't have any data, but any questions that come through the bot that are not able to be attributed to an article are gonna log themselves under this UAQ or unanswered questions section. Um, the beautiful thing about this is that from this section, you can go ahead and create FAQs or articles that could answer that question or similar questions in the future. And with that, I guess we will wrap up this video on the answer bots inside of Sales IQ. Um, again, I'm Tyler Colt with Zanata Consulting, and I do want to thank you so much for watching. Um, if you found this content useful or if you have any questions, please drop those down into the comment section below. Uh, we actually try to answer as many questions as we can on our weekly podcast, and then we'll come back and respond to that question so that you know that we've answered it. Um, before you go, of course, we would love if you would click that like button and subscribe down below to stay in the loop for any future videos. Thanks again.